This week on Machinery PTV, a wide range of equipment is on the auction block at Jaycox Implement. Greg has some background on why this Kubota skid steer brought such interest. This old John Deere is still at home in Kentucky. And Greg looks back at a very memorable and chilly Minnesota auction. Your machinery is a serious investment and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Peak TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Peak, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machinery Peak TV from Southwest Minnesota this week. We're here for Jaycox Implement Inventory Reduction Auction. Now, I gotta thank you folks for watching the show all these years. I did get one comment from a viewer recently and said, Pete, can you, we love the big stuff, but can you show some smaller equipment? And this show is for you. We've got a couple skid steers, a UTV, even a telehandler, so stay tuned. But before we watch all this fun stuff sell, let's go back to the studio, catch up on the latest farm equipment news. All right, thanks Pete, I'm Clinton Griffiths. Some good news for equipment manufacturers. Sales of all tractors in the U.S. were up 22% last month compared to September of 2019. Now for the year, more than 218,000 tractors were sold, a 15% increase over last year. For the month, two-wheel drive smaller tractors were up 27% from last year, while 40 and under 100 horsepower were up 14%. Combine sales were up 8% for the month. Sales of combines so far this year, more than 3,700, a 4% increase over the previous year. A new Rural Main Street Index survey shows only a third of rural bankers feel their economies are experiencing recession-like conditions. The overall index reached its highest level since January of this year. For this month, the index climbing above growth neutral of 50 to 53.2. The survey among bankers in 10 states shows more than 8 out of 10 bank CEOs believe restaurants and bars are experiencing the greatest losses due to coronavirus, while only 3% believe farmers have the most negative impact from the pandemic. The organizer of the survey saying that's because of government payments to farmers. When we looked at the loan volume from the banks, it's, it's declined significantly, uh, lowest that we've seen since January, and of course that's pre-pandemic. And, and so the farmers are not relying as much on borrowing as they are in support from the USDA and other programs. Goss says farmers are being cautious right now, and that's why bankers believe farm equipment sales could fall by an additional 3% over the next 12 months. That's it for news. Now let's check on some recent auction prices from around the country. Now back to Machinery P. Hey, stay tuned folks, coming up, lot 496. This new Can-Am HD5 Defender UTV, this baby's gonna be fun to watch sell. Heck yeah, we cover telehandlers, folks. Have for years. Got a ton of auction prices on them. Now, on today's auction, we've got this Bobcat V417. This thing's got 2,275 hours on it. Now, last month, on a consignment auction in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, we saw a 2009 model V. 
uh, 417 with 3,350 hours on it, and that one went for 24K. Hey folks, I'm here with auctioneer Chaz Wheeler, Wheeler Auctions and Real Estate. Now Chaz, you're about as sharp a cat as anybody I know in the auction business. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, I'm saying it okay, because I, I know it's true. Now, 2020 obviously has been an unusual year. Uh, from where you're sitting, your guys' location there in Paris, Missouri, you pull from all over the Midwest here. Sales, what have you, what's your take on the used machinery market? Well, it's been surprisingly well in all facets. I mean, from low dollar to high dollar. Um, you know, we were very concerned going through some some of the prices that we have established in the cattle market, the grain markets, and so on and so forth, and the hogs. Uh, but you know, um, it's been there's been interest all over the board, and um, uh, we've been fortunate in Missouri that we've been able to still conduct sales where we thought that that our sellers were comfortable and our buyers were comfortable. We've all, we've accompanied uh, online bidding for lots of years on our sales, so it wasn't something new for us. So that made it easier for us. Yeah. And I feel for some of my fellow colleagues that, that didn't have that experience and had to either shut down or, or, or try to learn that curve because it, it is a curve to learn. Yeah, you know, it is amazing, isn't it, with all the headwinds and, and significant headwinds in ag, the good condition used is just, it's kind of like land. You, have yeah. you seen the same with good ag land? Absolutely. Too? Yeah, we've not seen any pullback at all. In fact, in a lot of cases, we think it's stronger than ever. Mm. Yeah, and I, and I got to say the same about the machinery that you just spoke of. An older gentleman's kind of dropped me a note and I thought it was good. He said, you know, Pete, when times are tough, more emphasis goes on to the good condition used. Have you seen that through your Absolutely. Career? Yeah, I couldn't say it any better. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Hey folks, something different and kind of fun here. We got a 2017 Can-Am HD5 Defender UTV. Now this thing is new. And one thing interesting we've noticed since the pandemic here in spring, early summer of 2020, search traffic to used ATVs, UTVs at machinerypeat.com are up Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale. Sold it, 
Machine Repeat TV, brought to you by Ag Direct. For simple, fast, and flexible equipment financing, ask for Ag Direct. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineRepeat.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineRepeat.com. Hey folks, I'm here with Chad Jaycox, president of Jaycox Implement. Now Chad, uh, let's talk the market. I noticed that your main store here in Worthington, you, you have uh, uh, UTVs, ATVs, uh, small vehicles. Uh, has that market been red hot here since the pandemic? Yeah, it's, uh, I guess that's one of the bright spots of 2020 with all that's going on is that our power sports division has seen a, a uptick in sales to the point where we are basically sold out of, of all new and used watercraft. The side-by-side -side, uh, business has also been very good. People are looking for items to do outside, so they're buying up this, the jet skis and the side-by-sides and they're going on vacations and, and getting away from people. Finding uh, some of our 10,000 lakes in Minnesota. Huh? Right, they're putting good use to the lakes this year for sure. And it sounds like it's kind of industry-wide with, with boats, bicycles, campers. So you're kind anything. of sold out, huh? Yeah, completely sold out of new and used right now. Oh. And what, what lines do you carry? We carry the Sea-Doo on the jet skis and then Can-Am side-by-sides and the Ski-Doo snowmobiles. Okay. Now let's talk a little uh, larger scale equipment. Uh, plant, how's the planter market? The planter market was a very good market for us this year, both for new and used. Um, surprisingly, we we had a very good selling pre-selling season, and uh, the trades that we brought in, we were able to get rid of as well. And we we just have one used planter on the sale between all three locations, and uh, very few that are left on the lot. I got to tell you, Chad, of all the dealer auctions I've seen in the last seven eight years, having a dealer auction with only one used planter on it. That's uh, telling. It was good for the planters, even for the like the fuel cultivator business. We at one time we had probably 30 used fuel cultivators here between the three locations, and and we're down to just a handful. Okay. So that that's, that side of the business has been pretty strong. Okay. Now how about uh, we have some track tractor vehicles on the sale today. How how's that market been? Yeah, the track market keeps gaining momentum. It seems like. Uh, it's very easy. We, we always stock one or two quad tracks new on the lot because we, we have no problem getting rid of them. As well as the used ones have always had great demand. So it's, we, we love trading in a good used quad track. Hey folks, a very special Tractor Tales segment for you today. We're in Dundee, Kentucky and we're here with Darren Luttrell. Yes. Darren, this is your grandpa's tractor. Why don't you tell us about it? Yes, this is a uh, 1939 Model A uh, with a number 25 loader on it, cable controlled loader. Uh, it was the first tractor that was ever bought, that my grandfather ever bought, and uh, from a dealership in Lewisport, Kentucky. What was grandpa's name? Uh, Ray Luttrell. And uh, when he moved over here to Ohio County, he brought the tractor with him, and that's been in the family ever since. He, uh, he paid $1,500 for the tractor, loader, uh, a two-row cultivator, five-foot disc, and a two-row planter. Just like buying a new tractor? Just like buying there. a new tractor today, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, Darren, were you telling me that this tractor, the 39, uh, it was actually a demo? It was a demo unit uh, and uh, built in 39, and he didn't actually buy it until late 1940, early 1941. Okay, so... He bought that. What was the next brand new John Deere tractor he bought? Next brand new tractor he bought was in the early 70s. It was a John Deere 4430. So this thing uh, was working on the working on the farm. Did the job. It did decades. the job. Yes, yes. Had a pull type mower that uh, mowed all of his uh, grass with, and uh, just uh, just worked worked every day. We restored this about 15 years ago and uh, tried to 
get it in a little bit better shape, had the uh, wheels were in bad shape, and then uh, my cousin and uncle have kind of taken it to a little bit to the next level. They've, they've straightened it out a little bit better, but it's, it's still a really nice looking tractor. It's still a usable tractor. Folks, please don't touch that dial if there still is a dial on your TV because you're not going to want to miss our feature item on the show today, this 2016 Kubota SVL 95-2 skid steer. It's got 829 hours on it. Got equipment to sell privately but tired of scams and hassles? Visit MachineRepeat.com and click Sell Mine. MachineRepeat.com, the simple and secure way to buy and sell equipment online. All right, all you faithful Machinery TV show viewers here, you probably, I hope, are remembering the 2018 Kubota SVL 95-2 skid steer we saw sold on a recent Northeast Illinois online auction that brought $60,500, highest auction price ever on a Kubota skid steer. Well, our feature item on today's sale is not going to hit that figure, but it's a 16 model. It's got 829 hours. 41,000. Well, folks, a month before today's auction, I saw a pair of 2016 Kubota SVL 95 two skid steers sold at auction. One was in Florida, had just over 1,500 hours on it. That brought 29,000. And one was in Michigan, just over 1,100 hours, went for 36.5. So I think we did pretty good here today on our 16 model with 829 hours at 41,000 bucks. All right, folks, we're going to go back in time to what I still consider to be the most memorable auction that I've ever covered in person. And it was on December 11th of 2010. I can't believe it was already 10 years ago. But the sale was in Fairmont, Minnesota. It was a farm auction. It was put on by my good friends uh, Dan Pike and Associates and Auctioneer Alley. Now, why was it so memorable? Because it was an old-time Minnesota old-fashioned blizzard. We had 12 to 15 inches of snow. The wind was blowing 30 to 40 miles an hour. Now you might say, Pete, why in the world did they have the sale? Well, it was one of those situations where a family member was sick and they just needed to get this, on, this sale done on time. So they went ahead with the sale and it proved once and for all my theory that bad weather equals hot bidding. This sale was gangbusters. Now the three highest prices on the sale, there was a 2010 John Deere 8345RT with 406 hours on it. That sold for $217,000. There was also a 2010 John Deere 8320RT, 266 hours. That went for $213,000. And I do remember the combine. It was a 2010 John Deere 9770STS, only 258 engine hours, wound up selling for $212,000. Now, what I remember about the sale, beyond all the great conversations we had through the snow and the wind that day, was driving back to my hotel room at the Holiday Inn, because I-90 was shut, we knew it was going to be shut, so I went back to the hotel room and the wind and the snow had blown in through the window onto the floor of my hotel room. Now that, folks, is the definition of a true old-fashioned Minnesota blizzard. Hey folks, thanks for joining us this week on Machinery Repeat TV out in Southwest Minnesota. Really fun to be here for the Jaycox Implement Dealer Inventory Reduction Auction. I think this is only the second dealer reduction auction we filmed in eight seasons of the show. Great fun to watch this variety of equipment sell like this Bobcat Trencher. Now if you, you need to make a point folks, check out Jaycox Implement online, jaycoximplement.com, 
and then hop over and visit me at machinerypeat.com anytime. And remember, free auction prices at machinerypeat.com now. See you back here next week. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. of equipment is on machinerypeat.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on machinerypeat.com.